You are now listening to Oversaturated, the podcast hosted by Johnny and Ralph. Now let's get it. <laughs> to another episode of Oversaturated, the podcast where we discuss music, movies, pop culture, and everything in between. I'm Johnny. And I'm Ralph. Welcome to episode number 221. 221, man. I'm simply Ralphie Rose this week. That's what's up, man. Look, new listeners, please follow us on all social media. Facebook, just search Oversaturated, the podcast. Twitter is Oversat Podcast. Instagram is Oversat, the podcast. And our email is oversatpodcast at gmail.com. And please be sure to check out our website, oversatthepod.com. Anything you need to know about OS is there. Yes, sir. If you want to follow us individually, I am the mind to wrap across your social media platforms. Yeah, on Twitter, I'm J-O-N, two underscores, the letter B. On Instagram, I'm J-B-S underscore E-S-L underscore A-A-M-U. Also, special shout out to WDJYFM 99.1 in Atlanta. ATL, ho. Shout out to OS gang down there in Georgia, man. Ah, man, my guy. Look, just hit a round of applause. This this is the case, man. How you feeling, man? Uh, man, I'm feeling great, man. It's been a long time since I left you. I know we was out. You know, we had an episode last week, but that wasn't us in our true form from last week. Mm -hmm. You know, it was pre-recorded, but, you know, we try to leave content for the people. But I am doing fine to answer the question. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I took the week (laughs) off, man. Uh, My wife's birthday was around that that. Uh, the, the day before we usually would drop our episodes of last Sunday. So, you know, we went out, kicked it, had a good time the whole weekend. Now that she's out the way, I'm back to normal. Ah, that's <laughs> what's up. That's what's up. H- husbandly duties for birthday is done now. So, you know, yes. we get to chill yes. a little bit. Yes. Chill a little Recover, bit. Recover, <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, brother, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Look, I gear, gearing up for my birthday, actually. Yes, so, yes, um, you know, anytime you take off work, it's like right before the time you take off, things get like super hectic. Yeah. So just just dealing with that and got that out the way. So now I'm chilling, man, just ready to go kick it. Ready to go kick it, honestly. Oh, shit. Wrong with that, man. Now, now, am I tripping? Am I the only one? So happy daylight savings time. Now we get longer, longer days. The sun is out longer. Yeah. But am I tripping, or am I the only one being affected? Like I'm still sleepy. I wouldn't say sleepy. It just threw me off, though. Like it really just like I didn't know it was today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't know it was today. Okay. If that's the case, I probably would have went out last night, so you can enjoy <laughs> the time going forward type aspect. No, you lose an hour. Oh, I lose out. Well, whatever. Hour. Okay, yeah. whatever. But I thought it was spring forward to fall back. Yeah, so you move. So when two when it's two o'clock, it automatically go to three o'clock. So you lose an hour. Lose an hour. Oh. Okay. So like you fall back, you gain an hour. Oh. Because it's like two o'clock repeats itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. thought that meant that with the time. I was gonna say, wait a minute, bro. Listen, hey, off. hey, I, I, I get confused too. I have <laughs> okay. to sit. I have okay. to sit and think about it. Oh, <laughs> no, no, you, like, you're not minute. alone, bro. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the one. Home yeah. So do some yeah. math. <laughs> You gotta really sit there and, and, and deep cr- uh, think critically about these things. But I guess but it's like well, when usually when usually in my back of my day when I was outside and it was like mm. it did spring forward and now I was like oh okay it's lit like I didn't it didn't it didn't bother me because we were younger we could recuperate. Yeah. See this time last week it was three oh eight not four. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah that's crazy. It's, look man this this is what this is what thirty six is. I know. And I, hey I love it. Uh, kinda anyway. Kinda. <laughs> this is me having my midlife midlife crisis. Accepting, like it, it, we we get on these mics every week and say we gonna accept our uncleness. Okay, real talk. All right, that, yeah. that's what we say until it's actually time until, to accept. <laughs> 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 until you tire <laughs> Sunday afternoon, like you think, you're even you more think tired. About, you usually. think about everything you gotta do this week. Like why does why don't I get a break? Like it's like it's so much going on. No, nah, that's true. See, that's the other side of the uncleness. That's the other side of it. Yeah, definitely. So, but no, nah, man, like, I, I wanted to talk to you about this real quick, man. This is not on the docket. This is not yeah, part of our, our lineup. But I watched Drewski's um, reality show, uh, the Could Have Been Records mm. show or whatever. I know he was on uh, Breakfast Club talking about how he shopped it to, networks. you know, networks, uh, Nulu, uh, Hulu, Netflix, whatever, okay. right? Yeah, Whoever yeah, would yeah. have them, right? Mm-hmm. 
I see why they passed over. Nah. <laughs> so okay. So I know about his like could have been records. I think it's it started out as a skit and yes. then he turned it into like actually look at like actually interviewing people to like sign and I know yeah. it's a whole thing, you know, you sign the women and all that. Yeah. But what is this could have been like house? Like it's what is kinda it? like making a band. Wow. It's like it's like that that scenario, mm-hmm. right? You have these artists that are kind of vying for a position to be on Could Have Been Records. Wow. So he's like the Diddy of that universe. I know it's a crazy <laughs> scenario right now to call anybody Diddy. But, you know what I'm saying, he, he's definitely the, the CEO record label head, and he has Nav Green from 85 South or, you know, the yeah. conglomerate. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's like, it's a faux reality show. It's not a real one, right? Because okay, okay. it's not. He's not a. He's not a label head. And and that's what I was about to say. Is he actually trying to create a musical act group or whatever, or is this just for? I think it's just his YouTube. character okay. doing that, and it's on YouTube, and it has millions of views. But that don't. It's not funny to me. Got you. Okay. And now maybe I'm just not the demographic that Juicy is trying to reach, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I watched, and I was just like, I was just like. You know how something is just such a masterpiece of shit you can't turn away. <laughs> it's like it's so bad. Like, it's, it's so good. bad. Like, like it's, you gotta no, really no. It's not even so oh, bad. It's good. Oh, it's man. just like it was so bad. Like I had to keep you watching the train wreck. Oh, wow. Like it wasn't funny to me at all. Now, granted, you know, and listen, I have a crazy sense of humor. So if it was funny, I would say right. It. And I enjoyed a good portion of Drewski stuff, but that that was not. It funny. was different. Damn. Like Drewski, Drewski does skits on Instagram three minutes, mm-hmm. right? Outside. Now, <laughs> this is, this about is this hour. hour. <laughs> now, granted, don't translate, the, don't grant, translate. now granted, the 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 comedy wasn't supposed to last on Juicy's back the whole time because mm. it's other components, right? Right. But this is your brand, bro. Like you did it, and then I mean, there's more to come because I think like even Birdman makes it depend. It's like other people okay. like Snoop. Okay. And it's it's gonna be cameos in it, but it's just not. It's not good, bro. The fact that he wasn't able to get like the networks to be on board, but he's able to get Birdman, Snoop, and whatever other yeah. celebrities on there is kind of. I feel like it's kind of crazy. It is, but it crazy. from their perspective, it could be them just. I don't want to say trying to stay relevant, but like, but I, look, Snoop has been doing side missions for like twenty years anyway, so yeah, but we get it. Netflix didn't give him a bad. That, that was the one that was kind. of, It's like Netflix, Hulu, like one of them didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Zeus is different because Drewski is actually bigger than Zeus than what that platform can provide. Yeah, for sure. It's I think it's more so the money, right? Like if you get the right money, you can go anywhere. But if I was Drewski, I wouldn't go to Zeus. I would I would shoot for Hulu and because I mean Drewski is a mainstream name. It's I would, doing, I would say so. He's doing Android and soda. Yeah, clothes. he's, like, a, he's, he's doing all that type of stuff. Com- so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, clearly he's a, a, a he's a household name. He's a mainstream name. Yeah. So if I'm a mainstream guy, I want my stuff on Hulu, Netflix, or you know something that carries that type of content for sure. He could have went to Tubi. Tubi, Tubi is under a rebrand yeah. right now. They actually changed their logo and everything. I saw. I just saw that on my. Stuff. I just see that on my. They got Tubi original iPad. content, so it, it could have possibly been a space where he went over there and probably built up Tubi. I would have did that if I was him. I wouldn't went to uh, Netflix. I mean, not Netflix. Uh, what's the name of this? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. But he gets all the money directly himself from YouTube, so maybe that 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 could that could be a component. That might be the component. So yeah, and it might be his sponsors too, because I know he's not. He said he didn't fully fund this all out of his pocket. Okay, so okay, that makes sense. YouTube probably was the best platform for everybody to recoup what they wanted out of this. Yep, makes sense. Well, speaking of staying relevant, real quick, mm-hmm. are you familiar with the artist named Four Bats? Yes. And that's only because, you know, I be on TikTok a lot, so I hear all the new songs, songs and sounds and shit. So. Yeah, so apparently that artist only has three songs or something on Spotify. He has, like, over 20 million listens or listeners or something like that. But recently, Drake just hopped on a remix of one of his songs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was – well, I was just wondering if you – first of all, had you heard it? And then also, remember, we had the conversation a few pods back about how Drake – tends to stay relevant especially with the younger audience like i mm. think this is the next step in that for him yeah uh, i mean i heard it for bass because that's a, a trending sound on tiktok mm-hmm. that's that's the that's, it, that's of the extent of it that's yeah. the extent of it but drake doing what drake does being a, essentially a vampire sucking the life out of some new artist a new sound so he can remain drake is crazy but you know shout out to drake though it, it is what it is man yeah like i mean Listen, you just got to call a spade a spade. Now, I haven't heard the remix. I'm pretty sure it's great because the song that the song that I'm pretty sure he hopped on, it sounds like something that Drake already made before. Right, yep. So it's real simple. 
Yeah. There's a formula, and it's sticking to it. Sticking to it. So there's that. Anyway, you want to get to it? Yeah, man. Off the dome. <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> man, I th- we've been doing this so long. Nearly, what, six, seven years now? It'll be seven years. It'll be month. seven years next month. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out to us. But, you know, I'm not sure if I asked this, and if I did, you know, charge it up to my heart, not not the game. Mm-hmm. But what's a concert that you missed out on from a living, well, not a living artist, but just throughout your lifetime, right? You like, damn, I missed that, and I kind of wish that I made it. Um, I think I have, I have two. Okay. Shit, three, actually. Um, The most recent one is the Kendrick Lamar, Mar- Mr. Morale, Big Steppers Tour. Mm-hmm. Um. I was able to watch watch the concert on Amazon Prime when he was in Paris, mm-hmm. and just seeing that, like, it was phenomenal. I would have loved to see that, you know, have seen that in person. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal, phenomenal concert, right? Um, the other two, Bruno Mars and Justin Timberlake. Oh, okay. I missed I missed the twenty twenty experience that that tour, okay. Okay. and then the twenty four karat Magic tour, Bruno okay. Mars. I mi- I missed both of those, and I. Just from seeing clips and hearing people talk about it, like I, I know I would have thoroughly enjoyed enjoyed myself in both of those. For both of those, yeah. Uh, no, nah, the twenty twenty was a vibe for sure. Like yeah. it's definitely one of the best shows I've ever been to. See? Like that's not even a debate. See, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Not a debate. So yeah. But uh, a concert that I missed out on, and it's very nostalgic. But it was the Cash Money Rough Riders tour. Mm. Uh, you're talking about Cash Money, the first ideation of it with uh, Big Thomas, you know, Hot Boys. That yeah. that that situation and then you have Rough Riders and you always hear these stories about DMX and his performance and how even Juvenile or you know Cash Money was like hey man X, X that dude I'm glad we went on first like you know what I'm saying <laughs> like right, that, that. Right, right. so it's like damn I missed that man it's like and then you know no, and X is no longer here so it's kind of like it kind of makes you feel a little bit you know a little bit of a way because it's like damn man I could have seen Arguably an all time great in his prime. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I feel that. So I feel that. It's like, damn, man. Damn. Rest in peace to DMX. Yeah, that's it, definitely. Um, so for my off the dome, kinda kinda similar. Okay. Um in the midst of festival season coming up, a lot of festival uh lineups have been announced. Um I think Dreamville just dropped theirs. Yeah, they did. Um I wanted to ask you this. So with Dreamville just announcing their festival lineup. Um, and Dreamville has a, a, a great roster of artists underneath them. Mm-hmm. And then also seeing how TDE just released the whole um, list of artists mm-hmm. dropping for this year. Mm-hmm. Um, if TDE and Dreamville had a festival on the same day, uh-huh. you had the money for the VIP experience, the most perfect conditions at a festival period. Because we, are, cause we already you, know, right? I'm glad you put that out there. <laughs> look, okay. you already know. Yeah. Um, which, one, which one would you go to? TDE versus a Dreamville festival. Which one would you want to attend more? Uh, Dreamville. Uh, TDE doesn't have Kendrick anymore, so that that okay. That was my other caveat <laughs> that, I, that I missed. I oh, missed. Okay. <laughs> Kendrick is included in the TDE. Oh, Kendrick. Mm, still Cole. Still Dreamville. Because I'm still more of a fan of Cole. Got you. Even though I think Kendrick's a a better performer, and that's you know, because mm-hmm. he get more. He does more with his stage performances. So like, yeah, that's the thing. He had he. Kendrick has more of a show yes. where Cole, his rapping and his songs mm-hmm. allow for him not to have such theatrics in yeah, the show. So, yeah. Kendrick, Kendrick's performances bring his songs to life a little bit more. For sure, for sure. Where Drake, I mean, that's what I said, Drake. <laughs> where J. Cole's songs are a little bit more straight laced. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like, oh, I, I know these words. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, I get it. So. That's true. That's but, true. I mean, and then just considering the roster <clears> of artists around, I probably still would rock with. With Dreamville a little bit more because they do more songs and collabs with each other than TDE does too. So it's like there's more Dreamville, like you know, you got the return of the Dreamville. So it's like they can That's still true. pull from stuff like that That's and true. collab and do stuff together where TDE may not do so much. And I was going to say that, and that's something that the Dreamville Dreamville artists have done for a while. Yes. like not just the Revenge of the Dreamers three, which was fire, yeah. but you know they do. Other people's projects, other collaborate collabor- collaboration albums, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Where TDE, I think they just announced their first one after yeah. Kendrick is off the label. Oh, right. hey, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I think for me, I think it would be the same. Like with TDE, of course, you know Kendrick. Kendrick gonna do his thing, right? Yeah. 
but I don't know how great of performers the rest of the TDE roster is, right? Mm-hmm. Like Ab Soul, I love Ab Soul, but I don't know how great of a performer, performer he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, shit, same with Schoolboy Q. Honestly, I ha- I've never seen the Schoolboy Q performance. Not saying he's not great at it, mm-hmm. but it's just not something that I've seen. Or and then, or or uh, J Rock or J- <laughs> or J Rock. So like they hold Isaiah, Isaiah Rashad, like their whole they whole list, right? Yeah. And I don't think is there a first lady of TDE. I don't think they have like a Ari <laughs> Lennox on it. Sizz- oh, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm about to say SZA. I'm tripping. So okay, so Kendrick and SZA. Like, right, right. You can't just, you just, can't, can't, just can't carry a whole festival. Not, right? not the whole. So nah, 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 Like nah, they so. definitely top billing though. It's kind of like if you compare, well, SZA over anybody else that's secondary at Dreamville. Okay, no, like SZA, no, SZA, SZA, SZA top billing on the Dreamville. Con- uh, yeah, she's headlining. Anyway. She headlining. Yeah, her, her, yeah, her and Chris Brown. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, no, that's fair. So, so no, nah, I I, w- I would go with Dreamville, and I just rock with a lot more, a lot more of Dreamville's music versus TDE. Yeah. That's 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 really it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Well, no, nah, people, that was off the dome. What's a concert that you missed out on? Let us know and why. Yep. And then would you ra- would you rather go to a uh, a Dreamville festival or a TDE festival where it's only Dreamville and TDE artists? Let us know. Yes, sir. Ah, OS Gang, what's happening, family and Ken Foe? What's cracking? We got a few things here on the OS News docket. But first things first, since we already just kind of leaned away from TDE, let's talk about a TDE artist. Schoolboy Q mm. dropped, uh, I will say, a longer way to album, Blue Lips. Came out, uh, what, last week? Mm. Le- not last week, but the week before. Two, right? Yeah, couple, about couple two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yeah. But we're here to give our breakdown and opinion on it. Johnny, what you got to say about Blue Lips, the album, bro? First of all, shout out Schoolboy Q. Yes. Um, I really, I really enjoyed this album. I really, really enjoyed this album. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a step up from what he's pre- previously done. I think the music, the music itself sounds better. It's not just like straight rapping. Like I think it, the musicality has increased. Um, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. What, <laughs> what you think? Uh, it's a rough listen. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is not what I was expecting from school. Boy, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like I, it's I don't. Different. It's different. It's different. I'm gonna tell you this. I don't like rappers evolving. Sometimes, like I just want you to rap. Sometimes, I mean, hey, bro. sometimes, sometimes that's a thing. Because that's, that's a thing. And it's kind of like this is kind of like how I was listening to Vultures. Right? It was a rough <laughs> listen. <laughs> I was like, what is this beat? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> like, what are these sounds coming out of here? Like, bro, is that auto tune? Like, that's hilarious. Like, is that auto tune? That's bro? hilarious. That's like, hilarious. Hey, like, not from school, boy. Not from him. Bro, that's funny. But there are some songs that I like, and it's mostly like, I like the joint with Rico Nasty. Mm-hmm. That That's sure. very Rico Nasty. Nasty esque, yep, yes, yep, exactly, for sure, for right? Sure, for sure. But um, oh, bro, that's funny. joint with Freddie Gibbs. Like, uh, listen, like I'm giving them some good, like, but it, I'm giving them some some shit on here. But it's just like, for the most part, you can miss me. <laughs> 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 it's just like sonically, it didn't do enough for, like, it didn't do nothing for me, so I couldn't hear the lyrics. Do you know what's crazy though? Yeah. The f- so with this being out a couple weeks and with me being in the car a lot more recently, like okay. I've been like driving and playing it. Okay. The first listen, I agree with what you said. Okay. Now, and the reason is there's a lot of different sounds on this album, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. not only is there a lot of different sounds, it's all jumbled up. Like yes. the, the the very the very the intro it's smooth, jet like the shit sound great, right? But then you get into the Rico Nasty joint, and it's, and it's like different. that the, the whole album. <laughs> it's like back and forth the whole album. <laughs> but, but, right after that, so Schoolboy has been doing a lot of uh, interviews and things oh, like okay, that, okay, right? Okay. So people have been people have had the same sentiment and okay. have been asking him about that, okay. like, like yo, okay. like kind of kind of sound jumbled like it's a lot going on yeah. but he responded by saying and i'm paraphrasing here but he wanted the album to sound like how he listens to music he didn't want it to be one straightforward thing he wanted things to be kind of mixed up which okay i mean that's kind of weird but i get it i think i get it right okay so going back and listening the second time third time it's like oh i get it now okay it's a little different because the sounds is di- okay i get it i get it so because of that, that's what allowed me to listen in a different in a different wave, a different frequency, and 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 understand what he was saying and how the album was put together. Okay. Because I would rearrange this whole album, <laughs> and and I think it would flow better. Mm-hmm. But 
from listening to how he wanted it to sound, okay, I get it. And I this is the it. thing too. I didn't I didn't go I didn't listen to anybody's opinion about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't li- I didn't I didn't see those interviews. I would like to see them now. Mm-hmm. But I was just trying to make sure that this is how I felt. And how I feel? I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like it's different. Yeah, it's just a little different. It's kind of like it's like him making Jesus or something. It's she like this is ju- his Jesus. She was jumbled, man. Yeah, like. Listen, bro. And and I know he can rap, so I'm not insulting him as a rapper, but this is me insulting him as an artist. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Like, <laughs> See, this is the thing. For for a long time, we used to talk about track sequencing and all this yeah, kind of This is a good example of how not to do it. <laughs> it's just a good example of how not to do it. It's like, I, and and the thing is, I know what he's capable of. So it's, I am a big, I am a fan of Oxymoron. I really love mm-hmm, that album. Mm-hmm. So this is not me coming at, you know, this is not coming me from, you know, this is not rap with his trap. I mean, Ralph with his trap ear. Like, no. <laughs> this, like, I've been also, you know, I can listen to some alternative, like, rap or different sounds, but I was just like, schoolboy, what the fuck yeah. is this, bro? Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. So, yeah, like, some of my, I, I definitely love the, the pop joint with Rico Nasty, but yes, th- yes. thank God for me, that's the one. That's the one. It come right after the Rico Nasty joint. Oh my God, that beat switch up at the beginning, like that that song for me is the epitome of what this album is. It's mm-hmm. a little bit of everything in that song that's sprinkled throughout this entire album. Mm-hmm. But as a whole, I really, I really, I really enjoyed this album after the first listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, you had to put that out there. after the first listen. After listen, the first bro, listen, I, I, listen, I made it through the whole album. I didn't skip. Like I was really listen. Yeah, I was yeah, taking yeah. my time. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, Ooh, I wanna, I wanna. I want yeah, yeah. <laughs> do this to the phone, like, yeah, bow, like, get that shit up out of here. But I'm going to listen, though. <laughs> when, when you get to that point where maybe there is an album that you're listening to that is trash, do you, like, undownload it? Do you, like, delete oh, the download? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Like, the Usher shit is not on my phone no more. Yikes. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's I'm not, I get it, but dang, that's yeah, crazy. <laughs> out of here. You ain't kick none of the song? No. Like, what? Oh, dude. Why? I, okay. My bad. I want to hear good, good. Per... <laughs> Personally, personally, I like the joint with um the dream on there. Yeah, that one that like, was cool, but it wasn't enough for me to keep. It wasn't it. enough, nah, nah, I, I, because I wanted the whole album to be good, so I don't want to keep two songs. Let me get that shit up out of here. Damn, that's crazy. That's just me though. Shout out to Usher, man. Shout out to Schoolboy Q though. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, but I mean, I realistically can't, can't rate the album because if I do it, I'm just saying it's a one. But I don't, really, <laughs> I don't really have like. It's kind of like because I only listened to it once. Mm-hmm. It didn't stick with me, so it's kind of like. You know where I can go with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, And I'm being nice because I like Schoolboy. You right, know what I'm for sure, for sure. So it's kind of like I, I really don't have a fair rating because it's like I took away two songs that I like. And I know that he's a capable artist, and it's just so frustrating to me. Like, I just – and and maybe it's not – maybe I'm not seeing the vision. I'm not here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So, like, what is your assessment? How do you rate rate this out of five? Okay, so after listening to it, the second, third time, mm-hmm. I understood his vision and how he wanted the track listing to sound. Mm-hmm. Still, that's still not enough for me to give it above a three. Mm-hmm. Like we still, like it still has to have some type of cohesion. Now, again, I could go and pick and choose the songs I want to listen to because that's what I'm gonna do going forward, right? But mm-hmm. as as it's built now, as it is on streaming, or if you buy the album, like yeah. how it's sequenced, I can't, I can't give it above a three because of that. Mm. I can't. So I can't it's so it. It, at least it's a three. At least, oh yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, yeah, that's yeah. Shout out to Schoolboy Q, man. Well, hey man, shout out to Schoolboy Q. But you know this album would survive in the previous era, per what Nelly just said on the uh, uh, Shop podcast, right? So Nelly was recently on the Shop, and Nelly always speak true because I don't never think Nelly told a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he told a lie. But this is the thing: when Nelly says something, it gets people shook. It does. Like I don't know why. I don't it, know why people. Just it gets the it. people going. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But he said that he was in the hardest era of hip hop yeah. to compete in. So Johnny's gonna play the clip real yeah, quick. Let me play this real quick. I mean, like, there we go. Do y'all agree or disagree with Nelly on this? When I put out songs, I had to go against DMX, Eminem, Jay Z, Eminem, Lil Wayne, Fifty Cent. Luda, nah. yeah. all of us are fighting yeah, for, for right. one spot. So in t- from two from 99 to like 2008, 10, it's the hardest era what ever do, to get rid of unit- So, yeah. So, Johnny, now that you've heard Cornell Hayes <laughs> speak on this, what do you have to say? Man, I, I saw the clip, and instantly I want to be like, yeah, that's right, Nelly Tillman. Yeah. Um, 
I had I really had to sit and think. Yeah, sit yeah, and think, course, right? Of course, of course, um, of course. Thinking about <clears throat> a lot of people call the nineties the golden era. A lot of people call the two thousands the golden era. Mm-hmm. We're not here to debate that right now. Yeah. But thinking about the era that, that Nelly is talking about versus the nineties era. Mm-hmm. I think I, I can I kinda feel like as far as like superstardom and hip hop that is, mm-hmm. I do feel like the two thousands was more of a it was more of a competition. It was yeah. more of a fight because you had more people that were able to vie for that superstar status yeah. because of movement units, because of being number one on TRL or 106, because of all of these different metrics. things and yeah. metrics, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think, I do think I kind of agree with Nelly. And yeah. honestly, anything past 2010, I don't really think we can. It changed when the blog came into yeah, the Yeah, but and and even then, like even today, like we can't determine what a superstar is outside of the big three. Big, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say big four because future, and we'll we might have to talk about the future because we, yeah. So Kendrick, Cole, um, Drake, and Future, right? Like th- those are the superstars of today. Anytime they drop, people gonna stop what they doing, listen, pull up, whatever, right? We can exclude them. Mm-hmm. Outside of them, who else is it? Maybe, maybe Nick, a Megan Nick, Estelle. I say Nikki. Nick, okay, well, Nick, Nikki's still Nikki, but I mean, le, le, if if we're just talking about the totality of career, right? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. still, she still matters. So okay, well, that would be 2010. Though. So yeah, that was only, that was only her from tens to yeah, present. Yeah. So those five. Yeah. Anybody outside of those five really? We, we like they can. It's do, really subjective. Yeah. Like, but those five are undeniable. Undeniable, but. From what Nelly was saying during their time, there were more. heavy, heavy hit, more heavy, heavy hitters at the same time, putting out albums, putting out singles, touring, doing all these great things at the same time. Mm-hmm. And the pendulum swung back and forth d- depending on who dropped at what time or how fire the yeah. single or album was. Like yeah. I, I think, I think I agree with Nelly on this. Yes. Um, like you know, I just didn't think before the bites. Yeah, for in. sure, for sure, for not, sure. Not not even just the fact that you know we're we're near where Nelly you know came up and all that, mm-hmm. but it's the time frame in which we came up yeah. too. So like that's yeah, we know some. We was we was uh, '90s kids, but 2000 rap raised us for real. For if you want sure, to be completely honest. So that's where a lot of my ear for rap comes from. Mm-hmm. Do I go back and appreciate? Early '90s stuff and even '80s stuff, of, of course. course, of course. But you know me, I'm gonna say fuck your era, like y'all say fuck <laughs> ours. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm Thanks. dead. At, like no, I'm, I'm so I'm so upset with the old niggas that <coughs> oh the '90s. You know it was more competitive. Well, competitive only, I guess, to the sense of like y'all niggas just cared about the rap more. And, and I and I give you and that. That's the thing. That's I the thing. give you that. But in the 2000s, you had to care about rapping and sales if you were anybody that we gave two fucks about. And like and like Nelly said in the clip, they were all competing for the number one spot. You want you didn't have that in the nineties. You didn't yeah. have a lot of hip hop artists competing for the number one spot. Mm. They were competing, but they weren't competing for much really. Yeah, yeah. It was di- it was different in the two thousand. Yeah, it's different in two thousand. And you gotta think about like like Nelly said, like okay, yeah, the one thing that Nelly can hang his hat on is that he sold a lot of records. Mm-hmm. I get that, made mm-hmm. a lot of hits. But a lot of people would not Nelly's opinion because he's not the lyrical miracle nigga that push the culture forward in that way. Yeah. He puts the culture forward, it's just not in the way that y'all think. Right. But you got to think about it like this. Like, he did outsell a lot of niggas, or at least he was paced to sell just as much as a lot. That's where his point of view comes from. Yep. Like, like you said, I had to do, like, he had to go out there with Jay-Z, Eminem, uh, DMX, all Lil them. Wayne, Kanye. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, my God, Like, yes. think about yes. all those people. Like, Fabulous is a better rapper than Nelly, but Nelly so way going cra- Was going more, crazy. Way more records. Was than, going crazy. Than Street Dreams, Man, respectfully. Come on now. And, <laughs> and in the midst of all of that, still found time to go do country music. Come Like, like for real. Like, this is not a, gla- this is not a Nelly, like, Blazing <laughs> session right now, but we're just speaking facts. It's about what's to be proven. Like, I mean, the records are there, the numbers are there, and the influence is there. Yep, and and everything that we're saying about Nelly also translates to those other artists that he named: the Eminem's, the Lil Wayne's, the DMX's. Like, it all translates to them as well. So, if you have, let's just say, ten of these artists, these super mega hitting artists, all competing at the same time to market share and all this kind of stuff like what other era had that i, I don't think there is one. not too i don't think there is one <laughs> not too many I, it's 
I don't know. We're we're arguing the same thing. So it's like this yeah. ain't really interesting. And <laughs> and, and, and and I know a, a lot of people want to talk about how maybe it's harder now. Well, it's a different time. It's streaming. It's blogs. It's all that kind of yeah. stuff. But also, a soup a superstar in hip hop outside of the people that we already named doesn't exist. Like I don't think that I don't think that any other hip hop artist going forward may be able to reach what we call superstardom. I don't I don't know if that's going to happen. It, it's a it, lot. It's a lot of people that are like they're superstars, but it's like they still have like a cult like following. Like you would say, Tyler the Creator is a mainstream artist, right? Yeah. But do you think he's a like? Do you think he's? A, I mean, he has his own festival, so I'm mm-hmm. not. This is not me shitting on mm-hmm. Tyler. I'm, I just want to see if where do you put him? It's like I feel like he's literally on the brink. Mm-hmm. Like he's on the brink. But, he can what, hit, but what else can he do? I, because the music is already there, and that's the thing. The personality is already there. He's already. He's already done everything. Like he can stop doing shit tomorrow. And and, and his he solidified. He solidified, right? And see, and I think that's where my point comes in because mm-hmm. what else can Tyler the Creator do? Because all he's done is evolve as an artist. The more music that he puts out, mm-hmm. so what it what left would there to be for him to be pushed over to superstardom? I I, I literally have no idea. It, he's not one album away. He he mm-hmm. already has nine festivals. He, he has won Grammys. He's won awards. Oh, he's, he's he's done he, everything. He hits. He 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 goes to uh Paris Fashion Week and all, all that other all stuff. All of it. But somehow he's just gonna be. Just, he, he right there. His superstars is here. He's, he he's literally right there. his toenail right there. <laughs> it's right there. Like that's crazy. And he's the closest person to it. Like who who else? Cause he, cause he has, Cause he, he has the everything. Reason, the reason I use Tyler is because he has the music that matches up with everything for else sure. he has going. For sure, I can't say that about ASAP. I can't say that about Vince that's, Staples. That's, I can't say that about none what, of these that's other what guys. I'm saying. And you know, I'm I'm probably missing somebody because mm-hmm. like Meg has a, a, she's she's superstar, right? But it's for the other shit. It's not it's, necessarily it's not for, the music. It's it, not the music. music. It's like a song or two here and there. Would you say Cardi is superstar? <sighs> If Cardi had continued to put out albums, and had she put out at least one more album, maybe we could have that conversation. Maybe, but it's been six years since her, since. so and we can't not, have that conversation. She's not going to. And then if she did drop an album, she'd be under tremendous scrutiny, scrutiny and pressure. Yeah. So hell yeah. So we can't we can't say Cardi. So but so going back to the original point, yeah. Nelly, Nelly, you were right. Yeah, no facts. <laughs> Thanks. Shout out to Nelly, man. Shout out to Nelly, man. Let's try this out for size two, man. Justin Timberlake. Mm. Coming back outside, man. That album dropped on Friday, bro. Oh, it dropped. Oh, damn, that's crazy. It drops Friday. He's coming back to save R&B, the white savior. (laughs) White savior complex, Johnny. Damn, he Thor in Wakanda. Yeah, oh yeah. No, he's 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 uh no, he's Evan Ross. Like he's Ever, Everett Ross. He's not even Thor. Like <laughs> giving him Thor is too much. I don't want to do nah, that. He's Evan Ross. Like he right. he already in Black Panther, but he does, he, does, you know, he flew the ship. A, a side character <laughs> yeah. that was able to shoot some yeah, shit yeah, out the yeah, air. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, all right. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. But I'm with that. Even with Justin Timberlake's new <laughs> album come out on Friday, it's teased the In Sync reunion. Johnny, how do you feel about the album? How do you feel about In Sync? And we already know how you feel about Justin Blake, but you can throw that in there too. <laughs> pause? I no, feel like, I feel like I should say. Well, it. hey, no, pause I, applicable. <laughs> whatever. Um, I don't know, man. Like, <clears throat> is I'm not sure where I stand on this. Am I excited for the Justin Timberlake album? Yeah, a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. I can't front on it. I can't front on it. Uh, because he's black again, like we said. Like Justin Timberlake is black again. So I, I'm here for black Justin Timberlake music. Like he already got Toby Nguyen, like one of the blackest people you can get. Man, what? So yeah, it's lit. So an uh, album that has that and an NSYNC uh reunion. I don't know if I'm that excited for the NSYNC reunion. I'm not gonna lie to you, mm-hmm. because the things they the, the the song they did for Trolls was just eh, yeah. it was alright. Mm-hmm. It was alright. And then they haven't made music together in literally twenty years. Twenty oh. years, right? Mm-hmm. Almost. See, you you almost got me. I was gonna say they ain't the Backstreet Boys, so I don't know. Like the I Backstreet Boys continue to make music g- together and tour, so <laughs> they not them. They not them. And I can't I can't believe I just said they on like recorded. It's so. kind of like you know you know what sideboard we go get into get back <laughs> into that. But it's, it's kind of like the boys to me and Jodeci argument, right? Jodeci is more so for the culture, just like in sync. Yeah. Is. But if you ask me, them niggas, if you, if you need them niggas to go out there and sing right now, you go ask boys to men go do it for you. Ask Jodeci. It's true. Just like you go ask Bashy boys to put that shit on, go sing before you do in <laughs> sync. Even though in sync crossed over to us more, that's oh. why I be you know, <laughs> you know I be 
I'll be over there with BSB Pauls. But you know, say let's get back to this. But <laughs> that, that's funny. Um, but th- could this be the R and B album that we wanted yes. for Usher? Yes, I, yes, I, yes. He, he knew where I was going yes. before I finished the, the question. Yes, that's why I said to save your back, King back. <laughs> Fuck you talking about? Because listen, that's crazy. like Usher ain't gonna do it. Chris White. Brown definitely ain't gonna do it. Chris Brown dropped. 11 11. I fell for the marketing. He was like, Oh no, you know, we go back. You know, I got 11 songs. I'm like, All right, cool. Then you do it's a double disc. Now it's got 22 songs. And then now you're about to drop some more songs because you're ready to go on tour. See, Chris, stop playing, man. You could have just dropped audio book volume three and kept it. Like, it's true. No, that's true. Like, that's but true. I think the new, the deluxe version supposed to have 13 new songs. I'm like, Get the fuck. No, nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. See, I didn't even know a deluxe was coming out. Yes. Damn, that's that's yes. Wild. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. So. We keep wanting the cer- the certain music from Chris and Usher, but you know who giving it? Paul, you know. I see that. <laughs> well, I had like, a yeah, yeah. that was about to be crazy. Thank you for the catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know who's providing the streets with this music? Bruno and, <laughs> and Justin Timberlake. Bro, what? The run that Bruno Mars went on with Twenty Four Carry Magic. What if that's what Justin Timberlake wow. is gearing up for? That's that would be Listen, insane. I've always said. And I stand on the fact that you can put the cultural appropriation tag on Justin. That's fine. I won't allow it for Bruno because Bruno is different. Mm -hmm. But those songs that he went and got, he went and got because Chris or Usher passed on it. I'm pretty sure those songs were shopped around. And, you know, I always say this. If Chris Brown made 24 Karat Magic, R&B would be back. (laughs) He did, but he didn't do that. He didn't do it. Like, listen, Babyface number ain't changed. Teddy Riley number ain't changed. Like, uh, t- Terry Jam and uh, Jerry Lewis, them, them, them niggas song, that shit ain't changed. That's true. But you let Bruno go get the shits, and you go stay over here with your songs. And your songs sound the same. Hey, man, it comfortable. Now, I guess. it's like I this. If 24 Karat Magic was considered an R&B album, we'd be talking about it like it was fucking Confessions. But it's not. Mm. It's pop because it's Bruno Mars. Mm-hmm. But if the right artist made that album, it would be considered R and B and we would be in a completely different space. It's true. Give on who, with all due respect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be like, man, get them little niggas up out of here, bro. But okay. I know, yeah. Let's uh, we went we with all the way. It's okay. That's back, okay. back to Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, from what I hear, that's uh the the single, I forgot what the single name is. Um, I did enjoy it. Was it Sanctified with Toby? Or was no, it, no, no, it, no. Nah, nah, Sanctified song? Toby didn't even come out. Like, I mean, it's not even on the uh, album right now. It's not available for streaming. Okay, got it. I don't, shoot, I don't know what the, uh, I don't know what the single was. But huh. looking at the track list, and there's, there's 18 tracks. Selfish. Se- Selfish. Okay. Selfish was a cool song. I fuck with Selfish. Got it. It seems more, like, it's still a pop song, but it has a, you can tell some, Little seasoning in there. Mm-hmm, little sounds C- compared compared to what you know Usher. And, <laughs> like man, that's I, I hate to keep bringing Usher name up, man. But like you disappoint me, bro. That's funny. Okay, so <clears throat> let me ask you this, and this is completely random. And mm-hmm. if we need to skip it, we can. Okay. But like, so with Usher's album, yeah. Good Good was the single, right? Yes. Even though the single is like o- was old. Yeah. Like I think it came out a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Like no, no, I think Good Good is fairly new it's compared fairly new. to. Like the song he had with Ella May and other stuff. It was like little Lucy's and shit like that he'll just put out. But okay. I think Good 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 might be it might be old compared to when the album dropped. Yeah. I mean but and it's, that, not, and it's that, not I'm I mean I'm not saying like it's years old. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I don't think got it's it. years old. Okay, okay. So my question is that a uh, good good was like at the beginning of the album. Yes. It was like track two, two or three. Two or three. <laughs> right. But the selfish selfish single is toward the end of the album. Do you mm. think that matters? No, as long as it flows within the sequence of the album. Okay, okay. I was just, I was just curious yeah. because. Let's but then again, selfish hasn't been out that long. Yeah. Good, good had been out. And I'm about to say, let's, let's use, let's use Usher's magnum opus as an example, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in the middle of the album. Okay, that was his lead single. Okay, got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, does it matter that it was a different feel though? Yeah, it does. That because album sequencing. Okay. That, you know okay. what I'm saying? Kind of getting mad to that point. True. True. Okay. Okay. Cool. I was just just curious, just curious, because I, I noticed looking at the track listing for Justin Timberlake's album, I noticed Selfish is number fifteen of eighteen. Yes, and then the NSYNC track is number seventeen of eighteen. Now, one thing that kind of scares me mm-hmm. that, that is eighteen songs. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Now, because because Justin Timberlake's like uh, album like 
like the the sweet spot for that uh, album from like that type of artist. Fourteen songs. Yeah, and that's and that fourteen might be pushing. Yeah, shit. I was honestly, I was thinking about ten, eleven, twelve yeah. at the most. Twelve, for real, at the <laughs> most. So. Yeah, what well, listen man again comes out this Friday, my birthday turn up. Hold on, yeah. hit the hit the applause. Um so no, we'll see. We'll see yeah, how yeah. how this sound. Um I'm, I'm listen, I'm gonna listen to it on Friday when it come out and, yeah. see, and see what it's talking about. I oh, know. I'm gonna def- I'm I'm gonna have it queued up. I'm ready. It's already downloaded, man. I'm so when Friday come around, it'll be right at the Just top. Right there. Yeah. Right there. <sighs> Let's try this out, man. Your boy, man. But hip hop legend, hip hop icon. Busta Rhymes has canceled the block Busta tour. Hold on, hold on. Look, I'll, I'll, I'm looking for this. Look, ah, ah, ah. Oh, damn. Not, <laughs> not the crow, not the yeah. awkward, but it's awkward, man. But what you got to say about, man, like, say about this, man? I don't know where to start. Well, okay, so I guess I'll preface it by saying I wasn't going. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, I don't I know. I just put that out there. I just put that out there. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm not going to say it. I can't I can't say that I'm surprised because okay. the reception to the Blockbuster album mm-hmm. wasn't the best. Yeah. Wasn't the best, right? And I think we I think we talked about this. I don't know if Buster Rhymes has ever been a headliner of a tour. And then I don't think at this point in his career would be the best time to do that. You, Especially <laughs> coming off a tour opening for fifty cent. You you're saying all the so <laughs> I'm, I like, just, I'm, I'm trying to keep it a buck right I'm now. Just, I mean, favorite. look, like, that's no Buster <laughs> Rounds is my guy. Y'all yeah. know that. But let's, but let's be honest. I mean, if yeah. we if we really gonna be honest with it, like yeah. I just I, can't, I I really can't say that I'm surprised by it. And this is the thing, right? Buster never takes a tour uh, like a, a break from touring, right? Mm-hmm. You just seen him at music at the end of the session. What was that last year? Damn, was that last? Or was it the year before? Well, either way. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, was recent. recent. It was recent when I saw So, him. so, all right, just seen him, and then it's kind of like he's on tour with 50 Cent, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, yeah, Buster can get off on these festival stages, but you're talking about a tour, bro, Yeah, and you're talking probably an arena tour at that. So, who do you get? Uh, like, Buster Rhymes has tried, mm-hmm. and I give him that. He's tried to hitch his wagon on to other artists as other legacy acts have done, so I'm not necessarily singing them out. Drake does it. JD oh yeah, for it. sure. Lil Wayne does. Yep. It. Everybody has an artist to push their legacy further. Who does Buster Rhymes have to hitch his legacy on to that's pushed on? Like Casanova? No. Like you know what I'm saying? Who else can I like? <laughs> Coil uh, Ray. Like it, ah, ah. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just saying. And then like getting back to B- Blockbuster, my critique of the album was he had all those little niggas on the on that album, and all them little niggas, all them streams can't help your ticket sales. True. And all of those artists that were featured. Can't have their own tour. That's the other part too. So yeah, except Burner Boy, but oh, yeah, even that's on that, 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 that song wasn't that good either. Nah. So I'm just ah, I'm sorry. So, so, Bust, I'm sorry. Hey man, I'm sorry. listen, but no, we, we keep it real about our favorites because if I if you know Jay do some fuck shit or something something he can't complete, I would definitely say it. It it's would true. hurt. It would hurt. But I would say. But it. yeah, it's true. But yeah, damn, Bust. I like, know, I know, <laughs> I know. I just. But I mean, I think the break from not touring, you're always accessible. You were just on tour with mm-hmm. 50. You do festivals in cities like St. Louis. So it's kind of like, where do you create the demand for your shows when you're already a legacy act? So even if you do name it Blockbuster, I don't want to hear none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I, put, put your hands where you I, I want everything. I want the nostalgic joints. And I want everything from leaders of the new school, goddamn, to anarchy. Anything after that, keep this. Sh- no, a Big Bang. All right, Dog, I was, okay. Big Bang is crazy. Yeah, I know yeah. that's an album name, but still, Big Bang is crazy. I listen, <laughs> everything to Big Bang, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, I don't want to hear shit after it's, touch it. It's a nasty, nasty yeah. uh, search history. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I think so. I think being a legacy act would have worked in Buster Rhymes' favor. Drop the album, which I think came out like November, December, yeah. a few months ago. Just sit on it. Just sit on it for at least a year. Then you can announce a tour, but don't call it the Blockbuster Tour. You got to come up with some type of legacy act because you got to sprinkle from Anarchy to Touch It in there. Yeah, You got to. You got to. You yeah. have to. Yeah. So I think he could still do it. Like maybe he, he needs re-releases event. re-release dates later this year for next year. Mm-hmm. Then I think he could do it, but he'll have to retool his whole tour though. Okay, now this may be an unfair question, but mm-hmm. do you think he's able to do arenas? 
By himself, probably not. Okay. Probably not. Even as a headline. Yeah. I just. It has to be the right mix of artists. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's it, gonna, it was like he'll have to be. For him to be a headliner, you know, I don't know who would have to be on the bill. Like, that's the crazy thing about it. Like, who does Busta Rhymes clearly head over, headline over that he's already in a class with, right? Because you already let your little, your little bro, you know, technically 50, you know, he's headlining over you. So who do who does who does Busta Rhymes headline over that would get the same type of demographic out their chair to come see him? He's going to have he's going to have to pull from the people that he had featured on his album. Yeah. And that, and that's crazy because I'm not that's going to see a Buster Rhymes Coyle Ray show. I'm not yeah, doing that. That generational gap is going to be crazy. It's, it's different. It's different, man. So that that's a, that was actually a good question because I don't know. Like, it would have to be. Like, it's kind of like, even if you say, like, the locks or something, right? Jadakiss by himself matches the star power of Buster Rhymes, even though their careers are not parallel. Mm-hmm. But if you're just talking about performances, Still. like, Still. people would love to see Jadakiss in the locks. Just as much they would like to see Buster, but I don't know how they would feel as Opening being up. an opener for right. Buster. And, and my point yeah. exactly. So it's like, how do you get somebody like the locks to say, "Hey, you know, man, I don't know." Because then he, who did he open up for Wu Tang? Yeah, when Wu Tang and Nas was on tour, something like that. And you know, Wu Tang more. Mm, no, nah, I think Nas was the headline. No, Nas was the headline. Okay, so it's like even in that hierarchy, you say Buster Wu, then Nas. That's crazy. That, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what happens. <sighs> yeah, we'll definitely see what happens. <laughs> but you know what time it is. Blurred topic, blurred segment, <clears> man. <sighs> Disney CEO Bob Iger has come out and said that they have quietly killed a few MCU projects to focus on quality over the quantity bullshit that they have been putting out just of late. That's me adding on to the uh, headline. <laughs> but, Johnny, what do you think has been canceled? Because it hasn't been, like, necessarily – they confirmed. haven't, said it. They haven't yeah. said it, but that is a definite headline from Disney CEO. And it's not just in the MCU. We're talking about Star Wars and other projects that are just in Disney in that lore. Okay, so it's not, str- it's not, it's not it's strictly, it's not strictly, strictly the MCU. MCU. Oh, got it, got it. Um, Hey, man, I don't know because this is <laughs> this is basically what we've been saying since Phase 4 started. Like, yeah. It's been way too much. It's way too much quality and not enough. No, no, no. Quantity. quantity too it's too much quantity but not enough quality in these projects um but i, I really am curious to know okay i'm not i'm not that um i'm not that well versed in the star wars lore especially uh like as of as of late but as far as mcu like i know they were talking about wonder man they were talking about uh, uh agatha series i know iron heart was a thing there yep. was a there was a wakandan um show that they were talking about so at least two of those i'm for sure is getting canceled right oh that was a uh, a vision a vision show as well right i think there was a vision show that they were talking about because remember white vision flew off yeah, yeah, yeah. and that we ain't seen or heard from yeah. him so i don't know man I, I like i i really don't know where they could go from here as far as cancellations and then where Based on the cancellations, how would that increase the quality of what's left? I'm I'm not I'm Disney, not really sure. Disney has a problem, right? They hitched their wagon for Disney Plus to to kind of go with this original content. They weren't banking on the movies because the movies are always going to make their money. Mm-hmm. They go, you can get you can get money back from movies, yeah, but you can't necessarily get it back from subscription shows. based shows. Yeah. When you put two hundred fifty dollars into a six episode show, mm-hmm. like how does that work? Like how do how do you recruit the money besides you know taking more money from your subscription mm-hmm. base like raising the price yep. and what are you raising the price for when the content ain't been good like yes it looks good but, but is it real the, the like writing um, the actors like are all of those things going to combine to make a great show yeah and they hitch their <clears> wagon <throat> onto the new content that they're per- turning out from at least the Marvel and Star Wars stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, yeah, I don't watch the Star Wars stuff, but it's huge. Like, Mandalorian, Andor, Andor, all that stuff. Like, that... That's a huge and thing. And I, I heard they got one with Andor, too. I heard yeah. that Andor like was Man- fire. Like Mandalorian, but it's like they still trying to do, like, spinoffs of the spinoffs, right? Yep. You already created new worlds and, and subset characters with that stuff. Right. But I don't, I'm not sure how Star Wars works, though. And they were, they were talking about doing a Mandalorian movie. So yeah. you got three seasons of the show, and, and now you want to make it into a movie, movie franchise. Like, that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. 
So, but just getting back to the MCU, like, you get all these announcements and all these shows, and these shows are supposed to be interconnected with the movies that sounded great until it actually happened, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm, we were big fans of it when it got announced, and then it's kind of like, it, it seemed, life was so much simpler when we got two films a year. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Because it built up anticipation. It was just like Marvel, seeing Marvel films became a must-see thing, right? Mm -hmm. And even though a movie may have been mid in hindsight, we were still just like, we got to go see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Like, even though Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is not a bad film. I got to revisit. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) No, no, I'm saying. (laughs) So I've... Okay. okay, Age of Ultron, then. Cyborg. Cyborg. (laughs) Because... I've been revisiting a lot of like MCU movies or yeah. Marvel movies lately. Like yeah. I just rewatched Deadpool. I watched Age of Ultron. I watched Endgame again, mm-hmm. which I might have to apologize. You gotta walk. You gotta walk I, it I back. Because you've been, you been trash in that film. I have. I have. I have. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true <laughs> but I might have to walk some shit back. But like you were, to your point, like. We we were in a prime when we got two two Marvel movies a year. Yeah. Like we were in a prime, even even with the movies like Guardians Volume yeah. Two, right? Like yeah. it's 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 cr- it's crazy how spread thin it seems the MCU is, yeah. or or has been as of late. Because never in my life did I think did I ever think we would would have gotten a She Hulk um, te- television show. Yeah. Now even even though the the concept itself was dope, the show wasn't executed wasn't though. necessarily executed the best. It wasn't yeah. terrible, but could have been better. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I I don't know, man. I don't know. So okay, which shows that that we know of that have yet to come out would you cancel? Agatha quickly, <laughs> easy, just easy. off just e- off the bat easy. like that. Ironheart, I don't think deserves a show just yet. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the character, and it's not, you know, I'm going to be fair, right? If I'm going to cancel white women, I'm cancel black women, too. But, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, make, make know, even. Make break it break even. even. Right. right. They both women-led shows, but I ain't on that right now. Trust <laughs> me, I'm not, baby. <laughs> but the Ironheart show, I think, like, we can get some more character development in the film before we just give her our own show because True. we already seen her origin. So what the fuck the show going to be about, respectfully? Point. Nah, point. Points are made. It's kind of like we already seen her with her her mock, her version of the mock one, mm-hmm. and now she's just going over here. And then the thing is, I I'm I'm we've gotten so far away from Tony Stark, and we're still bringing that stuff back up. You know that be Iron my Heart, problem. You know that's my Armor problem. Wars. Yep. Like it's like Armor Wars. Like isn't that an Iron? I mean Iron Man storyline. We are just putting it on Rhodey. Um, me eh, kinda. So I think <laughs> it's going to lean more into. Well, yeah, I guess so. The politics of <laughs> damn Tony Stark's uh, technology legacy. Yes, damn, yes. Damn, that's yeah. That's so it's kind of like just bring Tony Stark back, man. At this point, man, just we just need to do a hard reset. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, not not or oh, a soft reboot. I know they're trying to wait. Mm-hmm. Bring Thanos back, make him snap his fingers. Everybody just come back. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's the only way it's going to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Kane go get up out of here. Like, it's Man, like, we going to forget Kane. <laughs> and I think and I think that's where one of the quiet, the quiet, uh, um, man, I'm drawing a blank, cancellations yeah. is coming from. It seems as if they're going, they're moving away from Kane Dynasty and then it just is. doing a Secret Wars part one and two. Yeah. Which I feel like it's kind of nasty, but whatever. But for me. I would every every MCU TV show cancel all them shits and only focus on Daredevil for right mm. now. Only focus on Daredevil because we Daredevil has a known track record of being good from Netflix. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even with them moving the the the, the Defenders universe from from Netflix to Disney Plus, mm-hmm. the numbers for Daredevil have been have been increasing recently. Okay. So you focus on the Daredevil TV show that they're currently doing. Make sure the quality of that is phenomenal. Then from there, you can start building some of these other franchises. Okay. So that that would be my, my thought. Let me ask you this, because, you know, uh, before we get up out of here, right? Mm-hmm. Now, they're, they're, t- they're teasing a lot of teams, right? We mm-hmm. got X-Men Fantastic Four over here, right? Yes. Now, there's a lot of sub-teams yes. that can, you know, we really don't have to explore this, but we we doing this anyway, because mm-hmm. people love team-up films. We already know Young Avengers is happening. Okay. We got Thunderbolts, which is actually happening to a film. Yep. And then you got the Midnight Suns, which is, like, rumored, right? Yes. Do you think some of this stuff is better served as a Disney Plus universe rather than trying to make these shits films? Mm, mm, No. Okay. Because 
for for some for some of these teams. I think I think with things being too flushed out in the TV show would hinder it. Okay. Like if you got these big team ups, yeah. just go and put that in the blockbuster movie because okay. you get the explosions, you get all this stuff. Well, the reason I say that, I well, think the reason I'm thinking about the show, like, and I'm just say Young Avengers, right? Because mm-hmm. they haven't been talked about like that in <clears> the yeah. the big the big MCU universe. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, hell, the people y'all already showed, y'all had to recast them. No, <laughs> That's true. Now, okay, so let's take the Young Av- Young Avengers, for example. Mm-hmm. If they somehow create a show where it shows them, I guess, meeting each other, mm-hmm. and then the cliffhanger is there's a bigger threat that trans the transfers to a movie, mm-hmm. then I could see that. Because anybody that has uh, that could be used as a Young Avenger has literally been introduced in the show, right? Yes. The only person you probably say is what, maybe Ironheart, because she was in Wakanda forever, right? Yeah, yeah. But Kate Bishop, um, Isaiah Bradley's grandson, uh, Tommy and Tommy and Wicked or whatever, you know. Oh uh, yeah, from uh, like, WandaVision. Uh, even Miss Marvel, she Miss Marvel, uh, yeah. Lil Hulk, like Hulk's son. Also, Scar. Uh, yeah, Scar. 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 So it's like yeah. all those guys have been in shows. So how are we gonna That's get right. this to up there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like without proper character development. The reason why the Avengers work so well because we got character development yep. on the movies, and I don't think. Marvel hasn't proven to me, so that's why I'm saying to get this to the show. They haven't proven that that they can translate what happens down here up there, and it works. You know what? That's okay. So that's a great point. The mm-hmm. fact that we've gotten introduced to all of these characters throughout the the Disney Plus TV shows, right? Yes. You create a TV show where all of these franchises meet up. Now that's your, fire. Your prices on Infinite Earth type. Thing, yes, right? and then that translate into a bigger bad in a movie. Nah, I'm not mad at that. Now that's but, fire. But you gotta do. You, you gotta, gotta do it right. Gotta do it right. You gotta do it right. You there. already got all the properties. All the people have been introduced already. Mm-hmm. So now you create a story where they have to inadvertently meet up just on some random. Yeah. Who are you type? And then the Midnight Suns is kind of like that that dark feel that we would love to see from the comics, but. We haven't gotten every character that mm-hmm. could be introduced. Of course, you got Doctor Strange, you got uh, Wanda, you know, uh, Scarlet Witch, and Moon Knight, right? But you still Moon got Blade, Coast, Ghost Rider, who have not been properly introduced. Properly introduced. At least Blade. I mean, <coughs> Blade has been introduced, but we haven't seen him. Ghost Rider, we ain't seen that yet. Yeah. So and then, um, what's my man? What's my man that was in Eternals, who turned out to be a Blade character, Black Knight. Yes. So, so you got all that that hasn't really necessarily necessarily uh, came to anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I enjoy what they're <coughs> ta- trying to do with the Midnight Suns, but you got to handle a lot of this stuff with care because if we're getting ready to go into the uh, Fantastic Four or pretty much just the X Men saga, mm-hmm. listen, that's a lot. Yeah, a lot. A lot of this stuff got to be wrapped up. A mm. lot of this uh, multiverse, all this stuff got to be wrapped up. Yeah. If we, when you, well, we know Fantastic Four is coming, which yeah. they have their own universe of characters that yes. you can introduce. X Men, we already know that's a whole thing by itself. Exactly. So a lot of this stuff has to be wrapped up before we introduce these two brand new teams to the MCU. Hey, that, and that's why I said, you know, I kind of. To Fantastic Four X Men, like, hey, we gonna mm-hmm. put them over here because mm-hmm. these other subgroups, <clears throat> somebody gonna be lacking. I know it's crazy, it's crazy. I, with with us only getting one MCU movie this year, maybe a couple live action TV shows. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how those pan out, knowing that we're getting two or three MCU movies next year. Mm-hmm. Th- oh, yeah, next, I'll, yeah, next, year, next year, next year, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so. Hey man, I don't know. Maybe Bob Iger's on to something. Maybe he not. We don't. Yeah, on, only time will tell. Captain America suffering, man. Man, look. Sam Wilson finna catch it, man. And look, they they didn't rewrote or did or did reshoots for the for the whole movie. It looks like to basically take out the original villain. There's gonna be like a whole new villain in the movie, which is <laughs> which is crazy. So I look, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just here. I'm just, I'm just a consumer, baby. I'm just, I'm just a vessel, baby. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It. I don't know what That's to do. It. I don't know what to do. Anyway. Hey, but clearly, yeah. we have reached the end of our docket. <clears throat> Johnny, what you got for him, bro? Um, if you're on YouTube, thank you for rocking with us this long. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the comment section. Let us know about any of the topics that we discussed today, and we'll catch y'all next week. Yes, sir. Um, now, if you're on audio, you know what time it is. Song of the week, <clears throat> week, week, O-S week. O.S. Song of the Week. You are now listening to Oversaturated, the podcast hosted by Johnny and Ralph. Now let's get it. <laughs>